and um, very lucky to have probably one of the best coaches, all round coaches in the world, Richard Charlesworth. And uh, what's your most interest come from coaching, Richard? Any, what sort of sports, or is it mainly hockey? Or well, yeah, I I spent um, fourteen years coaching the national team in hockey for men and women, but I worked with a football club for a couple of seasons. I worked with New Zealand cricket for two years as a high performance manager. Um, I work with rugby teams and soccer teams in different places, you know, so I've had a fair bit of experience. I think what you find interesting thing about coaching is that most of the issues that occur, whatever the sport, uh, generic, 80% of the stuff is the same, whether you're coaching a hockey team or a football team or a cricket team or whatever it might be. There's the technical detail of the sport, which is important, but uh, the sorts of things that arise are go across the board in terms of um, the issues about competitiveness, what sort of a culture you need, how how uh, people uh, experience success and failure, sorts of things that uh, help you to be good, what's important. I mean, I think that no one really succeeds at elite sport without having a great deal of passion. You certainly need um, uh, some 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 natural gifts, some, you know, physical prowess, your ability to run, catch, uh, balance, all of those sorts of things are important, whatever the sport might be. But more than anything else, perhaps, you, you, need, you need to be diligent and you need to be able to be calm and, and uh, uh, decisive in your decision making when you're, uh, when you're involved at the elite level. Well, I was driving somewhere, and I think one of the Brisbane football sides won two games this year. Does that tell you anything about the coach? I mean, they've been unsuccessful. Is it drive he's given them, or? Well, let's wait and see. I think uh, you know, if if the coach is going to make a difference, then uh, you better be looking for more than two games yeah. uh, as an example of them doing well. But certainly, uh, you know. Um, in the end, if you want to be successful with your team, then you better have gifted players, you better have a quality, quality group of players. But the coach can make a difference. The coach, by his energy, by his uh, uh, knowledge, by uh, his approach. My view was always that um, whether you're coaching the national team or you're coaching the local kids at school, your responsibility is to make it fun and interesting, create an environment where the players are challenged by what you do, but also they're enjoying the experience. You know, if they do that, then they'll learn and uh, they'll want to come back again. And so you've got to create an environment where that's the case, uh, where they, they're having fun and it's interesting. And you've got to make little challenges for them all the time. Training's got to be you know, full of challenges and variety. Do you think in reading the famous golf coach, Harvey Penny, you know, sort of such a good read about his coaching and figure, but of golf, but what's, is it, when you look back, is there anyone that sort of, when you first started coaching or when you were playing that sort of was a good person to go back to, or have you met people coming oh, along? Oh, yeah, I, I think I learned from every coach I had. Everyone has something to offer, you know. My, I had five or six different coaches when I was in the national team. Some of them were, um, great enthusiasts. Some of us, some of them were really good at building team spirit. Some of them helped us to get as fit as we could possibly be. Some were better technically than others. Some uh, had an emphasis on tactics, you know. For a long time in our hockey team, we weren't very good at playing against the Europeans. Yeah. And so there were people who helped us yeah. uh, solve those sorts of problems. Um, well, so I learned from every coach that I had. And uh, when I started coaching myself, I read a lot of books. Yeah. I wanted to learn and there's a lot to be learnt from coaches in different sports and the way in which they go about things and uh, by asking different questions. If you look at <coughs> something like cricket, then, uh, you know, a lot of the f improvements that have been made in fielding have come from baseball. Yeah. That's not surprising when you think about it. In baseball, they've got a hundred years of keeping statistics on fielding, mm -hmm. you know, in cricket. The only statistic internationally that was kept was catches. Yeah. They didn't even differentiate a, a, a catch uh, in the outfield or in the slips or in the, uh, you know, any, anywhere on the field. 
they didn't keep any stats on how quick people were, how they threw, how often they hit the wicket, all mm -hmm. sorts of things. They're only just starting to do that, you know. So, so a game like baseball has taught us an enormous amount mm -hmm. about fielding in, in cricket. Yeah, so you like stats in all your sports you've I coached? Think, I think the numbers are important. They yeah. tell you a story. They're not the whole story. I mean, for instance, I don't know how you measure good bowling. Yeah. I don't think we've got a good measure on bowling. Yeah. Over a career, yeah. you've got to say the stats mean something. Yeah. And you've got big numbers over a career. But on any particular day, I mean, I can bowl four bad balls and get a wicket from each one. Yeah. And I got four for 40. Yeah. Uh, I can I can bowl four really good balls and they get nicked for four yeah. and I've got none for 40. Um, who bowled well? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, but very uh, much um, so. So you've got to have a way of measuring quality and in a game like cricket, where which can be so capricious, can be so unlucky sometimes mm -hmm. and, and so fortunate other times, then on any particular day, you've got to be able to measure what what happened and the quality of it. See, the funny thing is, mentioning John Buchanan, who had a great record as a coach, yet I see when he went to Middlesex and probably some of the senior players didn't, I think, like, if I'm reading the press, didn't like him. It's because he was probably changing things and I think he was big in statistics and all these things. Was is that was well, he wrong? I, or yeah, I he... think it can happen. I mean, for instance, Greg Chappell probably had a fair bit to offer India, yeah. but was seen as being unsuccessful there because he tried to change things, whereas yeah. other people who just went along with the flow yeah. have been more successful yeah. in India. Yeah. And I think that, uh, you know, you've got to understand the environment in which you're working. Yeah. But um, in the end, um, it, it's not easy to, to change, yeah. and change sometimes is resisted. Yeah. And uh, I know when I started coaching the women's hockey team, I tried to change a range of things, and the senior players um, sometimes can be the one, some of the most difficult. Uh -huh. You have to actually win them over, you convince them that you want to, what you want to do is going to make a difference. And so um, th that was a hard thing to do, uh, and it takes some time, and you have to uh, you have to invest a lot of energy in it. Now the other thing is you um, when you're um, what are the, if you advise me to take up coaching, what are the say three ingredients which are most important? Is it passion, or what, you know what things? Well, you've got to have energy. You've got to be. You've got to. You've got to have energy. You've got to provide an environment in which uh, um, you uh, are continuously um, um, but when you're passionate up, about what you do. Like turning up at trainings. You've got, you got to be there on time. You've got to be organised. You've got to have spent the time. You've got yeah. to have done the work. Oh. So I think that's important. You better stand for something, yeah. um, and and you know, more than anything else, you've got to stand for quality. Yeah. You don't accept second best. Right. You know, you have to have a requirement that there that that there's quality. Yeah. And then the, I think the other thing is you've got to actually say what you think. You've got to you've got to be able to give honest feedback all the time. Is that communication? Sort and, of thing? and your ability to do that, to have yeah. those hard conversations, sometimes is important. People might not like hearing it, but yeah. if you're consistent yeah. and, and uh, they respect you for your opinion, then you're going to eventually get through. And if you were appointing an assistant, what were you looking for as an assistant coach? I'm looking as a, for an assistant coach who challenges me, not yeah. someone who just agrees with me, because I want to have a dialogue. I want to, out of from that person, get new ideas, different approach. I want someone who doesn't agree with everything I say. If, if the assistant coach agrees with everything you do, then they're redundant. Yeah. You better you yeah. better have someone who provides difference. The sports psych that we work talks about it's if you have fear of people taking your place or he was a good cricketer and he said, Well, he'd read the West hoping that people competing for wouldn't make runs or he didn't realise that wasn't gonna help him and so he said you you don't wanna be having fear of someone helping you or uh, playing with you is that an important part as well? Or? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You've got to have confidence about what you do. But you've got to understand that there's always learning occurring, and uh, you know, as as a player, mm -hmm. you can't be looking at what everyone else is doing. You've got to be focused on your task. As a coach, you've got to be focused on what you're trying to achieve. And if you're worried about what other people are doing, then you you're really um, missing the point. Now, one more question, Richard, but I, I was talking tonight, it's sort of, it's funny, I've got a friend in England called Mike Weston who captained England and was 
I think he played 30 games for England, but which is not much now, but in those days it was sort of you know, a massive amount. But when you um, um, talk about, um, five minutes ago, 10 minutes ago, about offering the coach of Australia, which you know, I don't think probably a lot of them, but, and to me as a cricket, nothing, oh, what a great offer. And, and you didn't accept it because you've had other commitments, but um, that must have been a, a sort of feather in your coat to be involved in Australian rules, hockey, cricket, New Zealand, and to be offered the, the Australian career coaching job. Well, it was a long, long time ago. It was in, it was in uh, 1999 that I, Malcolm Speed was in charge and, and I had a meeting with Malcolm Speed and certainly I was interested. Uh, I'd been coaching the, the women's hockey team for six or seven years. The problem was it was the year before the Olympics. Mm -hmm. You know, if the offer had come after the Olympics, then I think well, that's the sort of thing I might have jumped on. But yeah. it occurred in 1999, we were a year out from the Sydney Olympics. Mm -hmm. I really, I was not in a position where I was going to uh, jump off the uh, hockey team and uh, yeah, do something cool. else. If, a stupid question, but if you got the job, would you have sort of got a, your own team and or how I suppose? Is that what, how you, you go? Well, I think you would have got a lot of people together who you thought to, could offer a, to make a difference, yeah. you know. You, you, you uh, as John Buchanan did, I think he got lots of people around him who he thought would make a difference yeah. to the team. He was fortunate, he had a gifted group of players, but, um, yeah, you, you need someone. You know, the national job's not telling everybody how to bat and bowl. Yeah. They, they know a fair bit of that, but you need experts in that area. You need people who can advise. I think the biggest area where there's competitive advantage in, in the international sport now is in human behaviour. Mm. So I, I think you need people who can help you in that area. Coaches are all amateur psychologists, but they're not experts in human behaviour, and you need people who can help you with that. One more question, which I never thought about, especially in me, but if the West Australian job was to be... If Justin gets a job, would you be interested in doing that as a new challenge? I'm or? too old. I, I don't want to do that. I don't want the commitment. Yeah. I jumped off the hockey team a couple of years ago because I didn't want a 24-7 job and I didn't want to be overseas yeah. uh, a bunch of time. And uh, so I'm not interested in that sort of a job, even if uh, anybody thought I could do it. Well, I really appreciate your time. You can probably, people watching this around the world will realise probably why Richard was so successful. Uh, thanks very much for your time. It's very good. It's a pleasure. Thanks, Ursie. Cheers.